So we set it to 36,000 feet. That's the altitude they were flying. So we've got a lot of cumulonimbus out, the, out of the window. They would have been seeing this sort of view. We know there was dramatic turbulence. Do we know what caused it? So at this sort of altitude, there's uh, two things that might cause turbulence. The first is a cumulonimbus cloud, which most people would think of as a One thunderhead. Looks like that. It would look very much like that. The other is um, something we call clear air turbulence, and that's caused by uh, the jet stream, very high speed uh, airflow at high altitude, up to about 250 miles an hour. And because near that there is air that's flowing much more slowly, uh, the there is a lot of turbulence between the fast moving air and the slow moving air. Would you know where the jet stream is and, and where that clear air turbulence is? Was there something on one of these monitors that would tell you that? Ahead of me I've got the uh, primary flight display and what we would be using to avoid turbulence which is the navigation display here. We can set the airborne weather radar uh, on that and it would show um, coloured patches uh, where you might have more turbulence. So, um, But that, that would be the that, thunderstorm that be, clouds as opposed to the clear air turbulence? That would only, that would only show the thunderstorms. The clear air turbulence can only be avoided by um, forecasting and uh, the other thing is pilots who've experienced uh, turbulence in a region will, will report that and that can be reported to other pilots flying the same route or in the same area. As the pilots feel the dramatic rise and drop that we've seen on the graph, what are they doing to try and okay. ride out that storm? So uh, the first thing they'll do is uh, take out the autopilot. In fact, it's likely that the autopilot would have uh, automatically disconnected. Um, and if you see, that's the sound that comes on. At that point, all they can do is uh, minimise the um, disturbance from the turbulence. The aircraft rose rapidly and then fell very rapidly and then rose rapidly again. And it fell about half a mile in a very short time. Um, and they, the passengers who were in their seats and belted on would have felt pushed up into their seat belt. But anyone not belted in would, have, would almost certainly have left the seat and any objects not, uh, not strapped down would have, uh, would, have covered, would have risen off the aircraft. And then there was a reversal, the aircraft started to come up and uh, then anyone who was in the air would have uh, then come down and that would have been more rapidly than if they were just falling because, it, it, uh, because the aircraft was rising underneath them and then they were falling uh, towards the aircraft, they would, have, they would have hit the ground very hard. Is there a risk of crash at that moment or, or is it under control? Well, there's no significant structural risk. So a lot of people get worried uh, when they look out at the aircraft and see the wings flexing. But if you see what they do in testing the aircraft where they bend the wings through uh, sort of 90 degrees, gets nowhere near the structural limits or shouldn't get anywhere near the structural limits of the aircraft. Uh, the problems generally come inside with damage inside with uh, objects moving around and people being, being thrown around. Is there something about the area of Southeast Asia they were flying in that makes it more prone to this level of turbulence? Thunderstorms are driven by the, the energy in water vapour. Of course in warmer areas uh, there's not only extra heat but that means there's more water in the atmosphere, more water vapour in the atmosphere. So uh, thunderstorms tend to be greater. What would you say to people who are nervous flyers? They've seen this in the news, they're now increasingly nervous. Uh, I would say that the reason it's in the news is, is how rare it is. So uh, there are about four billion people fly each year nowadays. Um, and I really can't remember when the last time this sort of thing happened.